Welcome to Tech News of the Week with your host, the other other Skarsgård. Welcome to Transcendent Nature Observation Workshop 101 with Ned and Chris. That's the word you stumble over? Observation? Observation. It's tough. There's so many vowels. Observation. Absurd. <laughs> what, what pub are you in? Oh, all of them. I'm everywhere. Uh, you may have noticed that it's Tuesday and not Thursday. Well done. And yes, we have shifted the main show to Thursday and our tech news to Tuesday when the news is fresher. It almost makes sense. And Chris is getting tired of the smell, which... Chris, it's your own damn fault that you installed the Zoom 4D total experience sensory panel in your house. I just I have a problem. I always sign up for betas. <laughs> Fair enough. Beta fish. All right. So, Chris, you're up first. Take it away. Actually, employing people to write content is for losers. Skinflint publishers continue to try to say. So we have talked about the many, many, many quote, news, unquote, outlets that have been using AI to write articles to hilarious and sometimes dangerous effect. Men's Journal, I'm looking at you. Well, guess what? Now we can add another one to the list, and it's a big name. Sports Illustrated, Ooh. of all places, was just outed for not only using AI to create fake content, but using AI to create the entire fake journalist. <laughs> Drew Ortiz, a fake person who does not exist, was created by SI to cover, quote, all things outdoors. Problem is, everything he said was AI generated nonsense. <laughs> and also remember, he was a fake person who doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Drew was emphatic about such sportsy sounding concepts as, quote, learning to play volleyball is hard, especially without a ball. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> After being pressured by actual journalists for more information, SI flat out deleted Drew Ortiz and replaced him with a new correspondent named Sora Sanaka, who, drumroll please, also doesn't exist. Of course. Good God. <laughs> you can't get me to not be fooled again if you didn't fool me in the first place. There is some deep irony that they made up a fake journalist who's an AI to cover all things outdoors when he can literally never be outdoors. That's not irony. That's just sad. Why choose? Well, going with that same theme, Devternity canceled after faking diversity. Listen, if you're a conference organizer and you're having trouble finding speakers that aren't white male idiots like me, the solution is probably not to invent speakers out of whole cloth. And yet... That appears to be the solution Edwards Chibosh found to his conundrum with the DevTernity and JD Con conferences. First flagged up by Gurgly Oros, the DevTernity conference sported speaker profiles from two women who didn't seem to have any online presence next to several very famous male speakers like Kelsey Hightower and DHH. One speaker, Anna Boyko, was listed as a staff engineer at Coinbase, except Coinbase has never heard of this person. And the other, Alina Prokhoda, is purported to be a Microsoft MVP and senior engineer at WhatsApp, a fact that Microsoft and Meta refuted. And this appears to be a pattern going back several years. After his initial Twitter post gained traction, several of the speakers and sponsors started pulling support for the sold-out DevTernity conference, which has now been officially canceled. Edwards claims that some of the profiles were testing profiles that accidentally slipped into production, which, even if true, means that he was unable to secure more than one woman speaker for his conference. He went on to say that finding women speakers was, like, really hard. To which Scott Hanselman over at Microsoft replied with his 920 podcast episodes featuring a range of guests from all backgrounds and genders. Sadly, because of AI generated content, it will be even easier to fake speakers in the future and perhaps even have them speak at some point. Though, if Anna Indiana is any indication, we're safe for a while. Disturbing reports surfacing about advertising company Google's Drive service losing user files. 
Ooh. So this is bad. Yeah. Over the past few weeks, there have been a number of people reporting that Google Drive has, how to word this, unexisted their files. This is extremely concerning because for many people, cloud storage is their only backup. Or since services like S3 and Drive have gone out of their way to insist on their basic invulnerability to data loss, their only file storage area. The problem seems to be that files stop existing. Google doesn't know why. And Google's Drive file recovery mechanism only applies to files that have been deleted by the user. This is, of course, unintentionally hilarious. In order to be covered by the recovery mechanism, you needed to have deleted the file. <laughs> I haven't gotten an email back from Alanis yet, but I am pretty sure that is ironic. Fine. This is an important reminder that there is no such thing as a data storage location that is 100% safe, be it cloud-based, be it data center-based, or be it magnetic tapes stored under your desk in your home office. I am looking at you, too large a number of customers for me to be comfortable with. Indeed. Now, I don't even want to comment on that because I also know entirely too many customers that do the same thing. You just looked under your desk. Don't lie to people. You hush. Maybe robo taxis aren't doing that great. Hmm. Autonomous vehicle transport company Cruise has had their permits suspended by the California DMV after investigations of several incidents involving robo taxis managed by the service. One such incident involved a hit and run of a pedestrian in San Francisco. The actual hit and run vehicle was a Nissan Sentra that struck a pedestrian at night while she was crossing the street. The struck woman was propelled into the path of a cruise vehicle, which attempted to perform an emergency braking maneuver, but still ended up striking the pedestrian as well. Detecting a collision, instead of stopping and waiting for further instruction, the autonomous vehicle chose to pull over to the side of the road, dragging the injured woman another 20 feet in the process. Cruz chose to omit that part of the incident to investigators and only produced the video from the car up to the point where it stopped the first time. It was only later that investigators discovered that the woman had been dragged and Cruz was forced to cough up the additional footage. In the wake of the suspension, Cruise has paused service in all cities, and the CEO of Cruise, Kyle Vogt, has resigned. Cruise is owned by GM, and they are rumored to be taking a much more active role in Cruise's management going forward, installing two GM executives to run things. Yeah, that's, that's probably a good idea. Maybe you should have done that in the first place. Maybe you just shouldn't have robo-taxis. All right, that's it. We're done. Go away. Bye.